This is a little surreal, isn't it? So nice to be with you, church family, and welcome. Thank you for staying. Uh, how many times did you say, don't go away on this weekend? Do not go out of town on August 31st. So thank you for being here. Uh, we are going to spend the evening really giving thanks to God, looking back at some of the things that he did over the last 30 years. Tomorrow will be about what he's doing now and going into the future. So it, it's a night of thanksgiving. It is a night. That's what it's about. It's about stopping to say thanks to God. But it's also a night where we want to say, God, to you be the glory. You know, in, in John chapter 1, it says, and we beheld his glory. And so we have a prayer this weekend. It would be that you would behold the glory of our Lord, who is full of grace and full of truth. Yes, yeah, so we are going to hear some amazing testimonies. We're going to sing some great songs. And then following the service, we are going to celebrate with some cake afterwards. So please plan to stick around, have some cake, look at our booths that are out there. But we're going to invite our worship team to come up and uh, invite you to stand as we sing. Now, some of the songs we're singing as you're standing, they're going to be some oldie goldies. And <laughs> they're the songs that got us here. And later on, we're going to share some of the scriptures that got us there. There's a lot in our program tonight, so we hope you're blessed and enjoy it. And let's, let's raise the roof tonight. Beautiful night, beautiful setting, and let's honor our Lord tonight. Amen. Coastal Church, let's put our hands together, praise our God.
to sing and worship Jesus. Yes. Well, we're going to continue to lift up his name. And this is throwing it way back to give God the glory. It's going to be good. He's faithful. Let's sing it out together. Here we go. Give God the glory. Give God the glory. Several years after the church began, early one morning, the Holy Spirit spoke into my heart and said, go to Stanley Park to pray. 
As I went into the park to pray, I wondered what I was here for. Then I came up to Hallelujah Point. I'd never really noticed it before. And as I stood behind this marker, God spoke into my heart and said, where this points, from that place, you will be centered. This is where you'll conduct a spiritual war campaign. I was surprised. But then I looked to my left and there was the nine o'clock gun which pointed over the city. Truly, there was a battle being fought for the city of Vancouver. I was surprised because our church was presently meeting at the Landmark Hotel about four blocks to the west. And I wondered, God, are you sure this is it? But he said, no, from here it will take place. Several years later, when I came back and stood behind the marker, I was stunned to see that it pointed directly to where our church is at. Today, the Shangri-La, which was completed in 2008, really makes it clear that God was right. From that place, our church would be centered, and the timeless truths of God's Word would be proclaimed so our city could hear the good news of our Lord. Father, Palm Pastors Dave and Cheryl, let today be the moving to a whole new realm in you. Father, we love them so much. Not only do we believe in them, but Father God, you believe in them. And so I pray that there be an incredible sense of destiny, not only in them, but in this church. And let this be a landmark day in history. That years from today, when we look back, yeah. we'll say we gathered in this auditorium yeah. and we dedicated it to Jesus. In your name I pray, amen. You know, what people thought was impossible was not impossible with our God. With our God, all things are possible. We're gonna sing that song. It was instrumental when we purchased that building. So church, would you stand and declare with us, all things are possible because of Jesus.
what an incredible story that our God has written. And we're here to celebrate, but also we're here gathered together to worship Jesus. It's Jesus that changed us. It's Jesus, it's his idea that Coastal even exists. So Lord, here we are to worship you. Here we are to bless you. Here we are to declare that you are our God. You're worthy of our praises. Thank you, Jesus. Sing light of the world. Light of the world, you step down into darkness. Open my eyes, let me see. Beauty that made this heart adore you. Hope of a life spent with you. Come on, church, if you know it, say it to your God. So here I am to worship. Here I am to bow. Lift up your song. Here I am to say that you're my God. You're all together lovely, all together worthy, all together wonderful to me. King of all days, oh so highly exalted. In heaven above, humbly you came to the earth you created. All for love's sake, became yours. Here I am to worship. Here I am to bow down. Here I am to say that you're my. You're all together lovely, all together worthy, all together wonderful to me. Never know how much it costs to see my sin upon that cross. And I'll never know how much it costs to see my sin upon that cross. And I'll never know how much it costs to see You're all. 
give you the praise and the glory because you alone deserve it. In the name of Jesus, everyone said, amen. amen. Would you please be seated? God's great love for the city of Vancouver began long before Coastal Church is here. For our parents, Pastor Dave and Cheryl, a trip to our city's downtown core led them to pray on the steps of King George Secondary School on Denman Street. The prayer was simple, if you can use us, here we are. That simple prayer led to a weekly downtown Bible study with a handful of believers, all with a heart to reach our city with the gospel message. This small group was the beginning of a growing congregation that led to seven years of Sunday morning church services at the Landmark Hotel on Robson Street. The routine of that time included some early mornings for our family, the loading and unloading of equipment, sound setup, children's ministry preparation, and even improvised indoor water baptisms. The early years of Coastal Church were marked with finding our unique purpose with our eyes fixed on God's love for the people of Vancouver. So here we were, no building and no office in Vancouver. In fact, the initial church office was in our family home. While actively looking to lease property, our parents were invited to meet a senior executive of Grosvenor in their office tower boardroom. They were offered rental space in one of their downtown buildings on Melville Street for only $10 a month. As my dad would say, he thought $10 a square foot per month was a great deal. But they responded, no, we want to rent this office to you for $10 a month in total. It was one of the many examples of God's favor opening doors for us in the city. No doubt God was at work, and we had the hope to continue to pour into people's lives with the gospel of the good news with a footprint of an office to give us an anchor. However, we never stopped praying for a permanent facility to hold weekend services. It was during this time in the early 2000s we took note of an old brick church building at 1160 West Georgia Street and began to dream about how this could be a possible location. After we had been informed it would soon be up for sale, we knew we had to pray. One morning on the building steps, my dad and Victor Kong, who was pastoring in Yaletown at the time, prayed together, believing God wanted to give this building to Coastal Church. They locked their faith together, and although the building was sold quickly to a local development company, a seed of faith had been planted. What emerged was a miraculous opportunity to temporarily rent the facility in the spring of 2001, while the new owners were in the process of obtaining building permits from the city. The plan for the property was to demolish the church and build a hotel on the land. During our short rental season, our small but faithful congregation spent much time in prayer and fasting, along with participating in a building refresh while believing God would make the impossible possible. The fresh paint, new carpets, and repurposed closet to kitchen allowed opportunity for increased worship nights and gathering and kids events, even though we had been told by many in the community that families would never come downtown. Despite the numerous obstacles, we still marvel at this season of our church with the provision of a donor agreeing to co-sign a mortgage for three years, God made a way for Coastal Church to purchase this building in August of 2002 and had a dedication service of this facility on November 3rd, 2002. It was Monday, November 4th, the day after we dedicated the property to the Lord's work, and our dad received a call from Vancouver City Hall asking if we would entertain the possibility of entering into a heritage revitalization agreement with the potential new neighbor the Shangri-La development. What timing. 
we recognize this was a supernatural contact. And it was no coincidence the call came the day after God's people prayed a dedication prayer over the building for the glory of God. This eventual agreement included selling Coastal's excess air density, allowing us to plan and complete a year-long renovation and upgrade of 1160 West Georgia from March 2005 to March 2006. In their years growing up in the prairies, never had they heard of entering into a financial agreement to sell air rights. During the year of renovations, the Fortis building, which was then called the Terrace and Gas Building, was our temporary home with multiple weekend services in their meeting rooms and renting an office in the same building. It's with gratitude that we thank those who made it possible and for their support during that time through what was called the Together We Can campaign. By the way, it's worth noting that Coastal not only renovated the facility, but was also debt free within five years. Now with an anchor location in the heart of the city, Coastal Church became a hub of activity and programs that were focused on reaching the city in all generations. Our kids' church developed from a breakout room at a hotel to a permanent classroom and space dedicated to running weekly services and early initiatives for families such as Urban Kids Camp, Parent Child Dedications, and the Coastal Preschool, which launched in 2006. Youth and young adults programs that were previously challenged with meeting in apartments, homes, a health club, and an office space now had a home base. Almost immediately, the building was used for youth services, concerts, and a gathering for young adults called Regeneration, or Regen as it's known today, which was birthed on the campus of UBC and then became an annual summer outreach at 1160. Through the Alpha Course, people were able to find faith. Through Celebrate Recovery and what is now Freedom Session, many found lasting recovery. Through programs such as Master's Commission and FaithWorks Bible School, people were able to grow and be discipled. And of course, through all of it, life groups remain the lifeblood of our church. A building may have brought us together, but in life groups, we grew together, we prayed together, and supported one another. As a number of groups began to expand beyond Vancouver and families moved into the suburbs, we saw the need for new meeting locations and places to gather closer to home. This would be the next chapter of our story. I have to say, it is so special to watch that and then to look out and be able to celebrate 30 years of what God has done at Coastal Church. It's very, very exciting what God has done. And as you can see, a lot has changed. <laughs> but we want to tonight, we want to take you back to 30 years ago in 1994 when Coastal Church was first planted, a seed of faith and here we are today. So I have the privilege, my name is Jen, by the way, and I have the privilege of interviewing four people that played a really big role, an instrumental role in the founding of Coastal Church. So I would love it if you would welcome with me right now, Pastor John Burns. Hello. For those of you who don't know Pastor John, Pastor John and his wife, Helen, were the founding pastors of Relate Church, formerly Victory Christian Center in Surrey, British Columbia. And they are passionate about helping people build thriving relationships, marriages and families, as well as healthy churches. Pastor John was the first one who introduced the needs of the people in the West End of Vancouver and the possibility of holding a weekly gathering, which eventually evolved into the start of Coastal Church. He continues to support our church and Pastor Dave and Cheryl in an advisory role. And this is a very special treat to just be able to talk with you because you have been a part of our family's life for a very, very long time. And when we actually, we first moved to British Columbia because you hired my dad to be a part of the staff at Victory. So 30 years ago, during that time, you drove my dad into the downtown of Vancouver and spoke of the spiritual needs of the people. What did you see then, and why was it so important for you to drive him through Vancouver? Well, I was born and raised in Vancouver, and I, I had a God love for my city. Dave, I don't know why we actually did that drive, but I'll never forget it. As we were driving through the streets of downtown Vancouver, tears were just pouring off our face because of a lost city. I just didn't know of very many churches. And uh, as we drove, we just talked about how God loved these people. 
thousands and thousands of people and how God wanted to build churches in this city. And I know we ended up praying, right? We're driving and praying and uh, we're just praying in tongues. I was driving, so I had my eyes open. <laughs> but I don't think Dave did. But so if we go back 30 years, why are we here? It's because God so loved the world that he gave his everything. And Jesus came, died on a cross, rose again, and told us that what he's doing from now on is I will build my church. Amen. That's so powerful. You championed this new fledging work as a director on a newly formed nonprofit society board in 1994 called Coastal Victory Church. For those of you who don't know, we were formerly Coastal Victory Church. Tell us how you recall that early start and the work that was involved with this new church plant. Well, Dave and Cheryl lived in Regina. <laughs> and I remember the phone call. I called him and I said, Dave, uh, I really think you're supposed to come out here to BC. And uh, we want to start a Bible school. And would you be the dean of our Bible school? And they said, yes. And, you know, they got out here and we, we, we had this great Bible school. And then we'd take this drive downtown. And, uh, well, long story short, we did everything we could to do something for downtown Vancouver. And I remember the day, Dave and Cheryl, when you sat down and you said, I think again with tears, I believe God's called us to be the pastors. And so, you know, in those days, we didn't know things about, you know, building campuses. We just plant churches. And that was, a, this, this was a church. And you guys took it. And I am so, so, so proud of you. And I look around and I see what, this is why, this is what, 30 years ago, the tears were all about. Thank you. Oh, can you give Pastor John a hand? Thank you. Thank you for sharing. This is such a treat. I also would love to introduce you to Terry Kesson. Terry, would you please join us and give her a hand as she joins us? So. For those of you who don't know Terry, Terry has been a part of our church since day one, from the very beginning, yes. And she was introduced to my parents at Relate Church, and you were a congregate member traveling from Vancouver out to Surrey. And you were drawn into Coastal to assist pioneering a new work in the heart of the city. It was probably a little closer to home for you, too. And you've, over the years, the many years, have served in various capacities, from a board level to facilitating small groups in your home to being a faithful prayer partner. Your consistency and your faith continue to be a pillar to many. It is such a treat to be able to ask you a few questions. I have literally grown up with you in my church life, and so this is such an honor. 30 years ago, while you were living in Vancouver and in the dental profession, you were introduced to a small prayer group that began meeting at the Landmark Hotel on Robson Street. Tell us how God directed your steps towards a commitment of becoming a founder mem founding member of Coastal Church. Well, because I had observed, um, first off, I wanted a local church. I had been traveling for quite a few years out to Pastor John's church. <laughs> Uh, Sunday morning and Sunday night, and just had really prayed that there would be something local in Vancouver. And um, when I observed, you know, saw, got to know Pastor Dave and Cheryl a bit out there and saw their integrity and their vision and their teaching, their family, it was a no-brainer. Um, it was such an easy decision to make to be part of what God was gonna do in Vancouver. We started out with a really small group, and so we, we had a lot, many things to do. And um, Pastor pulled on us a lot to do things that we didn't think we, <laughs> we were capable of doing. But, um, you know, as we watched him take steps of faith, it made it easy for us to do the same. And um, one of Pastor's favorite sayings was, he has many, but, one was, um, you have to be willing to change your seat on the bus. And, um, you know, as God brought more people in, we had to be willing to move over and make a place for them and let them, uh, their gifts, 
uh, have a place as well. And uh, one example was I actually played the piano <laughs> for Sunday morning service. It wasn't great, but it was all we had at the time. And then Alan came along and he took it over and I changed my seat on the bus. And it was like um, this pu big puzzle that God was putting all the pieces together in and where as all the pieces began to fit together, this beautiful picture was, was forming and God was doing uh, wonderful things. Uh, one thing that Pastor really encouraged was prayer. And he said, it's the foundation of our church and it still is. So we did many prayer, prayer walks. We prayed that every um, high rise in the downtown core would have a, a home group in them. We uh, actually went down and laid hands on our church when we were wanting to get it and prayed for it. We had weekly prayer meetings, but we also had a 4.30 in the morning prayer meeting. Now this wasn't your regular FaceTime prayer meeting like we have today. You dialed in and uh, then there was silence. And I thought, I hope I got the right time. And then all of a sudden I'd say, anybody here? Anybody here? All of a sudden a click and then you'd hear somebody say, Pastor Dave here, Marilyn here, Alan here. And when everybody gathered, we'd have our prayer meeting. And we did that for a season. Those were pre-Zoom calls, were those ones. Pardon? Those were pre-Zoom. <laughs> pre-Zoom, we did those calls. And, and funny enough, that season didn't last very long. No. The 4.30 prayer slot <laughs> wasn't the most popular. <laughs> You're welcome to everybody now who gets to enjoy the 8 a.m. Saturday morning prayer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Terry, one other question for you. How have you continued to remain anchor in your faith and in your church, and how do you now impart this to others? Like you said, you had so many different seats on the bus. I think you might have sat in almost all of the seats on the bus. How do you now remain anchored in your faith and now impart to others and to the next generation? Well, one thing God's been saying to me lately is to dig deep and finish strong. And I know that this can only be done as we keep up with the basics. So reading God's word, praying, being part of the body, you know, um, and as well, when I was um, watching the Olympics this, this past few month, month um, one thing, uh, you know, you see all these wonderful athletes and they're doing great feats, they're jumping off bars and twisting and turning, and I'm thinking, you don't see any older people out there but, um, but one thing I noticed was that alongside each and every one of those athletes was a coach who came along beside them and, and cheered them on and, you know, you can do this. Um, tweak it a little bit here, practice a little more there. And I just felt like that's, that's where God's put me now, is in a role where I come alongside new believers and and old and just encourage them. And um, I do this through different ways. We have um, a freedom session where uh, the girls that go through freedom session need a sponsor. And um, so they need someone to sit down with them and listen to their story and encourage them and pray for them. So we do that. And then we have um, an INSTE program, which is a Bible course extension like you can be anywhere and be um, you study through the week and then we meet together online once a week and um, it's great then also um, life groups another one of pastor's famous sayings was you need two wings to fly you need to be in the service on Sunday but you also need life group and we've had a life group in our home now for 30 years, and our home has been blessed because of it. Wow. So. Thank you, Terry. Let's give her a hand. Thank you so much for sharing. I'm privileged to welcome Pastor Sam Uwasu. Would you please give him a hand as he comes? Pastor Sam 
is the founding and senior pastor of Calvary Worship Center. Pastor Sam, thank you. He, please feel free to have a seat. Um, when he was introduced to my dad, they formed a friendship as fellow pastors with owning with growing churches and owning churches, I guess, but growing churches in the lower mainland. You brought encouragement and continue to keep our hands to the gospel plow in God's work at Coastal Church. And you have sensed the impact that the church can have. So we're so grateful that you and your lovely wife are here with us tonight. And I have the privilege of asking you just a few questions. So as you recall, your initial introduction to my dad, Pastor Dave, how did you view this church in its early years as a new house of worship in the core of downtown Vancouver? In fact, when I heard that he, they were planning to plant a church downtown, I thought he was crazy. <laughs> when, when churches were closing down, it is, it's, it's, God had a, a call, but I knew that God was speaking to him. Uh, he was a man of prayer, and that's one of the reasons why I was so attracted to him. He had a deep passion for God and for the city. And so we prayed for him. Uh, as most of you know, more than 90% of church plants in Vancouver don't survive. And you, you have to have God's call and the perseverance to, to do it. And I'm so glad you guys persevered. And this city is not the same because of that. God bless you. We've had the privilege of joining our congregations in worship through Voices Together, as well as having my parents join you at various services at your church. How have you seen the growth of Coastal over the years affect the spiritual atmosphere of our city? Definitely. Um, as you know, the downtown core spiritually is a gateway. Most people, when they come to Vancouver, they want to live here. Most immigrants, that's their first stop. And I, I, it's just unbelievable, and most especially to find a spirit-filled church that are, have the tools, the equipment, not just to preach the gospel, but to bring healing, deliverance, and hope for, for many people. And this city has been waiting for a church like this, and I'm so glad you guys are here. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Sam. Please give Pastor Sam a big hand. <laughs> Appreciate you. And last, but certainly not least, I would love for you to help me welcome William McCarthy. Thank you for joining us. William McCarthy has played a very, very special role in our church. And you really saw in Pastor Dave an entrepreneur. And from the business side of things, have played a pivotal role. Uh, William McCarthy is the president of a privately owned full service commercial real estate firm, WPJM McCarthy and Company. Did I get that right? I close it up. <laughs> um, you were introduced to my parents during the early years when my dad was actively searching to lease and purchase a church facility. You have since tirelessly worked alongside Coastal Church in locating, securing, and building out facilities that we now presently own. God has continued to bring encouragement to stay authentic to the vision that he has given us through you and the support that you have given to us behind the scenes. And so we're very grateful for that. I want to ask you just a couple of questions. Whenever your name comes up in conversation, and this is true, my mom and dad speak about you with admiration, but also as a very trusted friend. Tell us about your initial meeting with my dad and the potential that you saw in God using him to create a church in the community. Thank you very much for that, and thank you for hosting me. Um, I first met David and Cheryl at the beginning of Coastal Church's journey. One of my tenants was a congregant, and he knew that uh, I offered pro bono work, quite a bit of it, uh, to a lot of religious organizations. Um, I'm Catholic, um, but I'm a Christian, and I believe that uh, the mission is global. And he said, would you meet my pastor and perhaps give him some advice with regards to the future real estate needs of uh, Coastal Victory Church then? And I said, sure. Um, so I went down to 1400 Robson and I listened to David preach. I helped him stack the chairs up afterwards and we talked. Now, probably the most important thing in any relationship or any journey that bears fruit is I liked David and Cheryl right from the beginning. 
If you don't like somebody, it's very hard to be motivated to work for them. And I can say this, um, having known uh, David and Cheryl for 30 years, uh, they've not changed one iota. And how rare is that in people today? But David uh, and his team had a vision. And if there's a role I played, and that was perhaps keeping the vision focused, because while it's important to have the human element, which is the key, and the message, and the ministry, you need a foundation, and that foundation is often real estate. I looked at the Coops, I knew they were young, I knew they were passionate, they had the greatest gift you can give somebody, or somebody can get from someone, and that is a vocation. And so I said, David and Cheryl, whatever you do, long term, life's not a sprint, it's a marathon. The, the great philosopher Confucius, the journey of a thousand miles begins with one step. So I said, as you're looking for a home, let's be prudent, let's be holistic, let's be good stewards of whatever funds your congregants give you, and let the mission grow organically. So from the day I met them down at um, Robson to where that beautiful church, the mother church became, that's, that's eight years. And we worked very, very hard on that because we wanted to make sure that the flagship was a flagship. And I think there's a higher purpose and a higher calling why that became your church. It's quite interesting just to say that whenever we look at properties, and I'm proud to do all my work over these 30 years pro bono for Coastal, it's an honor. But the mother church or any other church, if a new congregation is coming in, it means the old one is fading away. And they want their church to go to good hands, to good stewardship. And so the ace in the hole is meeting the coops and the team. And that makes all the real estate work that I do um, easier. Thank you for saying that. That's so powerful. You've also walked... You've also walked alongside my dad as he has opportunities to view possible sites for new church facilities throughout the Lower Mainland. In the background, and prior to any of our properties becoming a reality, there are numerous conversations you alluded to those first eight years, and unknown situations. How do you view the properties and locations that God has allowed Coastal to oversee as a place of hope for people? Well, the last one we did was Coastal New Westminster, which is a beautiful church, which will have a rebirth under Coastal. And what do your dad and I do? Yes. Um, we walk, we talk, we pray, um, and we keep that mission statement, which was to grow holistically, grow organically, and grow synergistically. I've always told David and Cheryl is there's lots of real estate opportunities, but you've got to be where the need is great. You've got to go where people can get to you and where you can get a funding model that works. Now, I do a lot of pro bono work for my own church and other churches, and there's a saying in some where it's easier to, you know, if I would say, why did you do this? Why didn't you stick to the plan? And the Coops always stick to the plan, by the way, and Coso does. Perfect clients, thank you. Um, <laughs> but there's the saying that while it's easier to ask for forgiveness than it is to ask for permission, <laughs> that's not a business plan. So... David and I, um, either from members here or congruence or property would come up. A lot of realtors now know Coastal as a force. But we'll look and we'll discern, and there's always a list where Coastal wants to be. And we'll look at those, and we'll see if it's the right fit, and is there enough people there? Are we going to be able to grow a whole community here? And will there be supporting, and will you have the pastors and the ministers and all of the programs you run, will you have enough synergistic base to do that? And I will say this, every time David and I and Cheryl and the team that I bring in who've worked with me, all pro bono, all the inspectors, all the expert contractors, architects, they consider it an honor to work with Coastal, but it begins and ends with a prayer because you can feel it and you listen. You have to listen, right? And I think one last thing on that is the real genius of the coastal um, business plan, religious plan, church plan, 
was the integration of the mission and God's work into the community. We're in a very secular part of the world and a very secular part of our country. And I think the genius is that plan where it says, coastal helps, H-E-L-P-S, cities be better. And that's one of the good calling cards whenever I have to deal with city halls or whatever. I say, look at all the programs they're offering. Look at all of the good that they'll bring to this community. Do you want to try to do what they're doing and try to do it as well? And so slowly but surely, 30 years is a long time, but 30 years is nothing in the world ahead. And so the permanence that Coastal's done has, I think, been the hallmark. And, and that's kind of what I'm most proud, I think, of that first discussion. Um, and by the way, I always go on. Uh, <laughs> that first discussion we had at the hotel, stacking chairs. I said, if you're going to go on this journey, walk straight, walk right, and be for the long run. And they stuck to that. And so everything that we do is long term, long term. And again, it's very easy working with the folks because they're good people. Coastal has good people. And you provide something that we all need. Thank you so much. Can you help me give a hand to every person? And to all that God has done, thank you so much. celebrating 30 years as a church family. Mom, Our, who are you? Hey, we got, we got, you got, don't talk when I'm talking. How many days are going to be here? Well, just one day. Oh, okay. You said 30 years. I, I know, 30 years. The church has been here, but not you, not you 30 years. You're only seven years old. Okay, let's do it again. So I have some questions to hear your ideas of how we can improve. How can we make things better? So this is my first question. I want you now to think about music that you would like to hear on a Sunday. I love Christmas. Is ah. Oh, Lecrae. And my favorite song is Michael Jackson song. Does Michael Jackson worship Jesus? Well, yes. <laughs> Okay, I want to hear from you. The most wonderful place that we could have church. A park. The trampoline park. Yeah! Okay, Tegan. And a period. And we can go in the pool, worship. It'll be like, playland. <gasps> so that I can actually vomit. You want to vomit? Yes. I want to feel the sour pain. Oh, okay, interesting. It's good to like, when you're going on the ride that's scary, you can pray. <laughs> yes, you can definitely pray when you're going on a scary ride. All right, I have another question. Snacks that we could offer the adults. My mama loves Cheetos. Cookies. Cookies? Like, what's your favorite cookie? Chocolate chip. Mm. I will make all you can eat buffet, including a plate of just soy sauce and wasabi. No one's gonna like that. I wanna see them try it. <laughs> I'm not gonna say, mm, yummy. I got another question for you. Our mission as a church is to help make the city a better place. What are ideas that you have on how we can help people in our city? Worshiping Jesus. By worshiping Jesus. I'm working on like a book. Wow, what, what's in this book? My church and like the, how like you made the world and stuff. That's a great idea to go and make disciples. Giving them to the poor and then they will thank us and we'll say, you know, follow Jesus. I like your ideas, guys. It, it all starts with us doing our part, first in our families, and then taking that same spirit of kindness, of love, of generosity out to others. Thank you for being a part of our Coastal Kids panel. Oh, no, can I miss? We're done. <laughs> <laughs> go, 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 Jaden. Go, Tegan. Go, Zoe. Go, Ellen. Go, Shiloh. <laughs>
I was born and raised in the church. A lot of times we would go to camp in summer. In fact, my dad helped start one of the camps, but I really didn't have that epiphany or revelation. It's like he was my savior, but he wasn't my Lord. When I was 19, I came back to Calgary and Pastor Dave and Cheryl, family members, they said, do you want to live with us for the summer? And they began sharing with me about how they had recommitted their life to Christ. They had received the baptism of the Holy Spirit and they were different. That was kind of the birthing ground of myself. And that's when I recommitted my life to Christ. I received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, which was just a life changer for me. And I ended up going to Christ of the Nations in Dallas, Texas. It was like God was using my giftings and abilities in a new way to serve Him. When I returned back to Calgary, I got hooked up into a church there, and that's where I met Pastor Kevin. And we started eventually dating and getting married. When we first started dating, our church was actually kind of going through a difficult time in leadership, but I think a key thing that helped sustain me, I'll go back to having a great mom and dad, and to know that I had a heavenly father that I could trust that would look after us, it really helped steer us. I remember the day that I saw this guy, the word visitor, and he said, you'll be a visitor in your city in Calgary. That was a big deal, and we had to let go of that and go to our next step. In 1996, we moved here to Vancouver, and there was definitely some adjustments, but we just persevered. Right away as we got involved with the prayer meetings, with the life groups, Pastor Dave and Cheryl, the office was actually at their house. So I would go in and help administration, and then I did come on staff. I don't think anything tops just when you see people come to Christ. That's really, you know, why we're here, to see people trained and raised up. Being here almost from the very beginning, we've been able to see, like Pastor Karen, a young adult, and look where she is now and what God has done in her life. So to see God bless us with facilities, even this recent one in New Westminster, is really exciting. You can have a congregation, but it's another thing to have a facility still remember when we came into our building on 1160 West Georgia, praying through it. It was making history, and so there's so much to look forward to. I think it's pretty evident that we're definitely approaching the Lord's return. And the scripture is very clear. It says, don't forsake assembling together. There's strength when we're together. If there's two of you, you're stronger than one person. So when we assemble together and we corporately worship, that corporate anointing that comes into that room, the gifts of the Spirit that happen, how God speaks to you in the middle of the service, or you just hear that message, or you connect with somebody afterwards, or who you sat beside, it's really powerful. And I believe it's gonna be a sustaining factor in this time and this age that we're in, that we stay strong and that we rise up and we fulfill what God has for us. Thank you, Wanda, for sharing that. And to have our sister through that entire process has really been, it's, it's just such a gift to do it, not only with church family, but also uh, your, your sister yeah. and her husband and family has just been such a privilege. Uh, a huge thank you to all of the volunteers. When we saw those that had started from 1994 all the way to to 2024 and to see uh, the areas of ministry. Coastal Church really is, uh, as someone had mentioned, uh, it was God's idea, it was never our idea. And what if he, if it is his idea, then he also puts it in the hearts of his people and he certainly has done that. So on behalf of Dave and I, we just wanna say thank you, church family, for being yeah. so uh, willing to follow Christ with all your heart, with all your soul, all your mind, and all your strength. And we have, we really do have the most amazing volunteers this side of the Mississippi. This side of the Mississippi, yeah. We often say that, uh, you know, we're like an orchestra. Everybody plays their part. 
I went to a symphony one time and everybody knows I don't have a lot of musical talent and uh, so I was watching the symphony but the guy I liked the most was the one who played a big kettle drum he didn't do much but boy when he hit that drum it every it sounded so good and we need every part in an orchestra or a symphony to make it sound great and so we're thankful for everybody on our team that plays a part and especially to our staff and to our pastors and I know that they're serving in different areas and and making this event happen tonight but there's about 50 some staff and our pastors and and they're really the heroes here they're the ones that make it all happen and so would you just thank our staff and our pastors tonight we so appreciate them they are amazing they work hard. One of the sayings we have at Coastal Church is that you, got, you need to fly in formation. We need to be like the geese and fly in formation. We can fly further and more efficient if we fly together. And then, of course, uh, you saw some pastors, Pastor John, Pastor Sam. Thank you guys for being here today. But we have other pastors as well that uh, have come out to support us today. And, and uh, we're like other churches in our city. We're all busy doing our own things, but then we also come together. And different things have brought us together. I think of the 2010 Olympics and other things. And, and more so than people might realize, we really do work together and we love one another. And so I'm going to ask, if you're a pastor here tonight, I can't name you by name. There's just too, it would be awkward to do that. But if you're a pastor, minister tonight, would you stand? We want to recognize the pastors tonight. Come on, all the pastors stand. Somebody from out of town, would you stand? Just stand up, all the pastors, wherever you are. If you're in ministry, stand up. Come on, let's give it a big shout out for the pastors tonight. We love you. Thank you for serving. Thank you, pastors. And uh, I, would, I would name you, but I would, I would miss someone. But it, it, it moves me to tears to think you're here tonight. And... Uh, and like you guys, I, sometimes we'll, we'll pray for other churches. Uh, not too long ago, Pastor Matthew called and said, hey, what can we pray for you this Sunday? And we pray for each other. And so you just have to know, I, I think there's more unity in the churches today in Vancouver than there was 30 years ago. I promise you there was. There's more unity. There's more happening than you realize. And so just know in Vancouver, we're, we're working hard to cheer one another on. Well, you know what makes a church attractive is when we get along. The world is not attracted to a church that's squabbling over little differences. And so we want to we wanna work together. So we're, we're honored that we could be able to work together. And we, we couldn't do it without a good board of directors and a good board of advisors. And so I'm going to ask one on each of those boards to come up and give them just a chance to share a few thoughts. And I'm going to ask Pastor Fermin to pray. So uh, Pastor Peter Van Breda and Pastor Fermin, if you guys would come up, that'd be great. Give these guys a big hand. We're thankful to have good people around us. Uh, Pastor Peter Van Breda has been with us from the beginning, originally from South Africa, as you'll tell in his accent. And then Pastor Fermin is from Tijuana, Mexico. And uh, so, but they have stood with us. Board of Directors, they really help with all the legal side of things. And Board of Advisors, they advise us, keep us on the straight and narrow, and uh, make sure that uh, we're accountable. And so, Pastor Peter, Pastor Fermin, I know that you had a couple thoughts to share. And I'm going to have Pastor Fermin also pray for us. What an amazing occasion to be together tonight, isn't it? I want to just compliment you as the church, Coastal Church, for what you've accomplished. And I thank God for Pastor Dave and Pastor Cheryl and the vision that they had so many years ago. I remember the landmark mm -hmm. as well. Dialing through the phone book, calling people. Yes. And so God's been so good. And I want to say something about the family. Uh, without the family, you don't have a church. Mm -hmm. And their family has been with them from the beginning. And so I'd like uh, Jen to stand. Please, Mike, would you stand? I'd like Chelsea and Josh to stand. I'd like Matthew to stand. I got them out of order, though, unfortunately. <laughs> He's number two. <laughs> And uh, Sean and Lacey, would you please stand? And why don't we give them a wonderful, warm welcome. We've seen you grow from, yeah, 
to amazing men and women of God, and we thank God for you. So thank you so much. Well, it's such an honor uh, to be part, and uh, you, you embraced us from Tijuana uh, so much. So I, I'd, I'd like to pray tonight for pastors. I'd like to pray for the church. So if you could all help me out by closing your uh, eyes and bowing your heads, and let's pray. We've gathered here today, Lord, to celebrate 30 years of your faithfulness to Coastal Church. And we come before you with hearts full of gratitude, so many blessings, guidance, and love that you've poured out onto this congregation over the years. We just say thank you. Thank you for Pastor Dave and Cheryl, their unwavering dedication to your word and to the love for this community. May you bless them and may you bless their family with strength, wisdom, peace as they continue to lead and inspire others as a family. Surround them with your protection and fill them with joy in the spirit with their ministry. Bless their sacrifice, their dedication, and let their legacy inspire future generations for your kingdom. Lord, we ask you continued favor upon the church family. May it be continued beacon of hope and light in a community that so much needs it, drawing people to your love and grace. Strengthen the bonds of fellowship among its members and inspire them to serve one another and to serve the world with joy and compassion. As we re reflect on the past, Lord, we honor the leaders and volunteers here, the members who have poured their hearts into this ministry. We pray for wisdom and vision in years to come. May they seek your will in all things and lead with courage and integrity. Lord, may Coastal Church continue to grow in faith hope and love. May it continue to make the city a better place. May Coastal continue to be a place of healing, learning, and worship, where hearts are transformed and lives are changed, where people can enjoy the abundant life in Christ Jesus as given by the Father through the power of the Holy Spirit. In all things, we give you glory and praise in the mighty name of the name that's above all names, Jesus Christ. Amen. Wow. We really appreciate having people around us and uh, showing off and saying, I don't know why you would have called us. I say, God, I, don't, I would never have picked us to do this. I would have picked somebody else. But he, he picked us, and here we are. And he's always brought people around us to help us because we just didn't know how to do it. But he wrote us into the story. And, uh, you know, we, you heard the story about buying the building. That was really a big landmark for us as a church. And we had everything all ready to go when we went to buy it. And the last minute, all our financing fell through. And uh, I said to Cheryl, I'm going to go pray and fast. I'm going to go to Whistler for a few days and just pray and fast because I don't know what to do. It's papered up, and now we don't have the money. What am I supposed to do? Uh, but we sang the song, All Things Are Possible. And uh, by the way, I'll tell on Lacey for a little bit here. Um, because she sang as a little girl, she thought it was all things are popsicles. And so she around singing, all things are popsicles. Uh, but we believed everything was possible. And uh, I have to admit, I came back from Whistler that day, not sure if it could be possible. And, uh, and then as I was driving back, uh, I got a call on my cell phone and they said, is this Dave Coop? And I said, this is Dave Coop. And he said, well, this is Jim Patterson. Would you come visit me at my office? And, uh, and he said, I heard you're trying to buy a church. And I said, well, we are. And um, he said, long story short, he, he gave our swing a push. 
uh, when it all fell through by the hand of God at the right time. And he said, I'd like to co-sign for you. And so I remember going to the, the Canadian Bank of Commerce and the, the banker wondering how in the world I happened to put that together. He said, who are you again? Why is this happening? Um, but, you know, it was the goodness of God. And it was heard, you know, in five years, because we had that support, we were able to pay it off. And we, we got together. We had the, uh, that campaign, Together We Can campaign, and, and it happened. And so, you know, there's a lot of people, I won't mention others, but there's a lot of people who came along at the right time to make it possible. We need one another. We stood on verses over the years, and Cheryl and I just want to go through a few scriptures that we stood on. We're here because of the grace of God. We're here because of his faithfulness to his promises. And uh, we'll put them on the screen. One of the verses that I, I stood on was Isaiah chapter 45, verse 23. And I, we prayed this a lot because it was rough. It's still rough. Pastors, you guys know this. I will go before you and make rough places smooth. I will shatter the doors of bronze. I will cut through iron bars. I will give you the treasures of darkness, hidden wealth of secret places, so that you may know that it is I, the Lord God of Israel, who calls you by your name. And we prayed that a lot. God, would you make a way for us? It's so rough. But God is faithful to make a way in rough places. There was another verse that, uh, that we stood on. There was a number of them, but I'm going to Exodus 33. Uh, this verse we were standing on, we were in our building, and for a year, as, as you heard, we, as a church congregation, were going to the Terrace and Gas building. And as a church, and again, pastors, I, you understand what this would be. How, is this, how will this work? We didn't know what church that was meeting in an office tower. How do you have midweek meetings? How do you have services? And so this is the verse the Lord had given us. And he said, my presence will go with you and I will give you rest. And then he said to him, being this is the, the portion that we stood on, if your presence does not go with us, mm -hmm. do not bring us up from here. And aren't you glad that we can always go to God and he will, when we say, Will your presence go with us? And if it doesn't, please put a stop to our plans. Yeah. He stops plans, and he also opens doors. And when he opens doors, we want his presence to go with us. Amen. And that's certainly what he did when we went into the Terrison. Yeah. So, such a good verse. The next verse that I'd want to share is found in Jeremiah 29, 7. And this really came as we learned to love the city. As you know, uh, I'm, I'm a country boy, and uh, the last place I would have ever thought I would be is in downtown Vancouver. And the people that I grew up with, they would have, they would have said, there's no way Coop will end up in downtown. That's the last place that he would be. But God has a sense of humor. And in that journey, this verse came to us, Jeremiah 29, 7. Also, do good things for the city. Bill McCarthy had mentioned that. That's so, inter so important. We integrate are serving the city. Look at this verse. Do good things for the city I send you to. Aren't you, aren't you, we're all aware there's enough bad things happening in our city. We need more good things happening in the city. And he says, pray to the Lord for the city you're living in. Because if there's peace in that city, you'll have peace also. And so when we say, let's help make the city a better place, this is a verse that that came from. This next verse, who trusts that if you are going through a difficult time, that this will be an inspiration. This will be a word for the Lord for you. And that's found in 2 Chronicles 14, 11. And in this verse, Asa cried out to the Lord his God and said, Lord, it is nothing for you to help, whether with many or with those who have no power. Help us, O Lord our God, for we rest on you. And in your name, we go against this multitude, O Lord. You are our God. Do not let man prevail against you. This is when, as Dave said, when you were, when he was in Whistler and, and there was people coming to us 
there were business people coming to us that wanted that property on, on Georgia Street, and they said, this will never be a church. Go out to the suburbs. There will never be families here. And it was so discouraging. How many of you can relate? When you step, you've stepped out in faith, and then the discouragement comes, then the, the voices come, then the, oh, you can't do it comes. That's what was happening in our lives, in the lives of our church. And here is a verse that we could stand on that the Lord gave us, and it's also a verse that you can stand on. Another scripture that, that helped us is found in Luke chapter 10, 55 to 56. Um, Jesus had sent his disciples out, and uh, as they went out, they, uh, they'd gone to different, well, gone to Samaria, and they wanted to find places for Jesus to, to stay, and uh, they weren't welcomed at those towns. And so the disciples said, Lord, would you like us to call fire down from heaven? Now, just before this, they couldn't believe God to feed the multitude, but they could get fire from heaven. That's interesting. And uh, so they wanted to burn up the people. How I many know the Lord didn't call us to burn up people? He, he, didn't, he called us to save people. And this verse really spoke to us, and that was this. You do not know what manner of spirit you're of, for the Son of Man did not come to destroy men's lives, but to save them. And they went to another village. And we, as we're here, we just said, God, you... There's a lot of different kind of people in the city, and some of them I frankly don't understand, but you didn't come to destroy anybody, you came to save people, and so that's the mission we wanna be of. And so we would pray, God, help us to remember what spirit we are of. Help our church remember what spirit we are of. Yes. A verse that we have stood on for 2024 going into this 30th year was Psalm 90, verse 17. And let the beauty of the Lord be upon us and establish the work of our hands for us. Yes, establish the work of our hands. And as we continue to stand on that, and, and even throughout the rest of the year, realize that this goes well beyond coastal as a church. It goes into the body of Christ. We have, uh, as Dave mentioned, to have so many wonderful pastors from within the lower mainland here, and to know that in the future there will be much more working together as the body of Christ. What we are praying for and believing for, that he will establish the work of our hands for his name's sake, amen. Amen. Then another verse that we really relied upon, put our faith into, is found in Matthew 28, 19, and 20. And uh, this is the go verse. Our theme for this year was this word go, as you know. And here we read, go therefore and make disciples of all the nations. And of course, Vancouver is a city of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I've commanded you. And I love this part, one of my favorite parts. And lo, I am with you always. Always. Can you say always with me tonight? Always. One more time. Always. He's with us always, even to the end of the age. I know we live in a perilous times. We don't understand everything that's going on. But one thing, we have a great promise for the past and going forward. He will always be with us, even to the end of the age. We have stood on that. And we'll continue to stand on that promise. A verse that is found in Psalm 130, verse 5 and 6. Uh, is, this is especially uh, meaningful because there was a, a season in 2007 that the doors opened for us to move our family downtown out of the suburbs, out of the family home that we built. And as a mom in particular, uh, this verse became a refuge for me. I will wait for the Lord, my soul waits. And in his word, I do hope. My soul waits for the Lord more than those who watch for the morning. Yes, more than those who watch for the morning. And God was so faithful. He brought both of us, but as a mom leaving the nest of our home, going to an unknown and bringing our kids into the downtown of Vancouver, 
I needed to know that I know that I needed him more than I needed anything else and that we could trust in him more than anything else and we could trust him, our family and our children to him more than our circumstances or where we lived. This verse was especially meaningful for us in 2008. Yeah, it was. Cheryl was a trooper those first couple of years when we moved down. I won't take time to tell stories. I don't have time for that, but uh, our first apartment, we had, we had two apartments because they were smaller, so the kids were on one level and we were on the other level. So it was Christmas time. They'd be coming down in their pajamas. It was, you know, it was, you did really good adjusting to all that. <laughs> yeah, anyhow, it's been a journey. Next verse. We'll just give you a couple more. The next verse is found in Romans chapter 8, 31 to 32. We thought about this a lot. Of course, just before this, you know the verse, all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. And shortly after that, Paul writes, what then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? You know, this walk of faith, sometimes things come against you. And you have to remind yourself, well, if God's for me, who can be against me? We have the big guy on our side. God is with us. He who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? And so we stood on that verse. Father, we need your provision. There are those who have come against us, but we focus on you, Jesus. You are the author and the finisher of our faith. And we'll say with Paul, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, where it is the power of God unto salvation to the Jew first, but also to the Greek, to the Gentile. It's for everybody. And so many times we stood on that verse, God is for us. Let's keep going. This last verse, as all of God's word is, he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And as important as this was over 25 years ago, found in Isaiah 48, verse 6, you have heard, see all this, and will you not declare it? I have made you hear new things from this time, even hidden things and you did not know them. That was a promise we needed to stand on because there are things we did not see. But in 2024, church, there are things we do not see. And we still need to stand on this verse, and it's just as true today. And we can be inspired as we look back over 30 years to see the faithfulness of God in his word, that if he was the same then, he is the same today and will be tomorrow. Amen. Amen. Can we thank God for being faithful to his word all these years? This tonight's about honoring him. He's been faithful. He's kept his word. And uh, we look around and we see what the Lord has done. And so we, we give him honor. And uh, as you said, there's great things to come. We're looking forward to what God has ahead of us. That's tomorrow. We'll share that tomorrow, what God has ahead of us. We have an amazing preacher in the house. Pastor Anthony Greco is going to preach up a storm tomorrow. As uh, his friend and our friend Wayne Myers would say, my, 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 my. So that's, that's coming tomorrow. And, uh, you know, we, we just want to again thank you all for forgiving, supporting what God's done. I'll put the QR code on. I'm not up here to, to take a big offering up tonight. But I do want, we have people say, how can I give? How do I support? What do I do? Well, church family, you know what to do. But let's continue to give into what God's doing. You know, Jesus in the Sermon on the Mount, he, that's his TED Talk. He, he said this, he said, and when you give, not if you give. So he just assumes we give. And then he said, and when you pray, not if you pray, he assumes we pray. And then he said, and when you fast, not if you fast, he just assumes that we do. And so let's honor God. One of the most honoring things, don't do it for us, don't do it for the church, just do it for God. Say, God, I want to honor you. I want to I give into what you're doing to help make the city a better place. And so uh, you've seen the QR code up there and, and as church family, even, even guests, you know what to do. After the service, uh, as Cheryl mentioned earlier, remember there'll be some fellowship time for cake, but there's also some booths you can go by and visit. We want to uh, end on a high note. We're going to end tonight worshiping the Lord. We had some great time of worship, and we had amazing music already. But let's stand. You're the choir. Not up here. You're the choir. And so let's stand together and give God the highest praise as we wrap up our service.
worship you, Jesus. Sing, my Savior, my Jesus. My Jesus, my Savior, Lord, there is none like you. Church, let's praise our God. Nothing compares to the promise that is found in Him. Well, we have one more song before we get to celebrate with cake. It's always been about Jesus. Let's sing this one way, Jesus.
Truth and the light. I live by faith and not by sight. Come on, church, sing it out. Living for Him. Sing that one more time. You are the way, you're the truth. You are the way, the truth, and the life. I live by faith and not by sight. For you. of God's faithfulness and it is just the beginning.